And now we are live, and welcome to Sunset Stitches, everybody. My name is Trevor Conkergood, and um, <laughs> welcome to um, our home here in sunny Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. Um, today's program is called Digitalk. It's the Floriani Digitalk presentation. It's my very first one. Um, that said, I'm planning to do this weekly. And so um, it may change throughout the days and times, but the plan is to go live every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Saskatoon time, which is 3 p.m. in the Eastern time zone. And you guys are all welcome uh, to come. And so today we're going to be doing a cool design of um, Winnie the Pooh, you guys. It's going to be, uh, I'm actually going to digitize this like, um, well, the truth is, I've already digitized uh, this one. Uh, I even stitched it out and the download is ready to go. And so anyone who's already uh, a member of my workshop four, uh, which I see Suzanne's here and she's a member, uh, can go ahead and download this now, you know, and this one too. Um, I did the two designs, you guys. So um, that said, we're gonna work on a third one today and um, you'll really enjoy watching, but um, it's not a class today. It's more of a work and chat, okay? So I'm going to be working on my design, and you guys can chat with me. And so I'm so happy to see I have my son, Nicholas, in the house with me today. Uh, thumbs up for Nick. Hi, Nick. He is uh, manning the control panel and able to let me know about great chat that goes on while I'm working. So you can ask questions, but it's not a questions and answers class. So maybe someone will answer. <laughs> um, I might chat with you guys a little bit too, but really I want to get in and do some digitizing. Um, so I know people are going to ask about how do I get this design or if I want it. And I know people will, will want it. If you're not a member of my FTC workshop, you could also join my Trevor and Friends Embroidery Club Season 2. It is the longest lasting embroidery season ever. We started in 2019 and got stalled in 2021 and are finally getting back at her. <laughs> Embroidery Club Season 2 is in full force now, you guys. I'm super happy to say that there's three downloads remaining of that season, 10, 11, and 12. And um, we're getting very organized to putting those out. And so I want to say thank you to Loren, who is um, who was always a very big part of... Uh, Trevor and Friends Embroidery Club. And um, Loren's been here doing some of the bird. This was a series in season two, the Bird on Branch series. And Loren's been in the house doing some um, catching up on the final downloads. So look forward to those. If you don't know, there was, you know, if, you're, if you've got season two, then you'll recognize because there's been, you know, nine previous ones that were released. Well, there's 10, 11, and 12. They're coming um, and Loren also did a really beautiful hand sketched font that will be uh, not one of our free fonts of the week. This one was be only for members. So if you're in that Trevor and Friends Embroidery Club season two, uh, that will be coming also. Anyway, today we're doing Winnie the Pooh. What I'm trying to say is if you want to get all my stuff, the Digitalk's going to be every week and I'm going to do new designs every week, not just Winnie the Pooh designs, other stuff too. Um, and members, whoever is a member of one of my two things, my embroidery club or my Floriani classes, my latest Floriani classes is workshop four. And so you could join workshop four. Um, I'll give you a tip. If you want to join any of them, there is a coupon. Uh, you could use this to join for workshop four, or you could also use it to join for, um, what I'm trying to say here is, Trevor and Friends Embroidery Club Season 2. The code is Trevor99. So if you don't know, if you want to join, it'll reduce the price when you buy it to $99.97. And so um, that's what I'm saying is if you want to become a member and what when you're a member of my workshop four, well, we have challenges every month. There's new classes every month. And there's a whole heap of past classes if you haven't already done them because workshop four has... 16 past classes that we've already done plus 16 challenge classes that's 32 classes you guys that we've already put in the can and there's more to come because there's we do two every month 
So if you're not a member of my workshop for you can join for 99 bucks. You won't believe how much stuff you get, but you're going to get my, uh, the, the latest challenge for workshop four is the, um, spiral graph challenge, right? Are, are you guys working on your spiral graph designs? I see some of my friends here from my classes. Kimberly, are you going to do one? She's um, a big part of Trevor and Friends Embroidery Club. And I, since she happens to be here and I was talking about it, I just want to acknowledge that Kim is a wonderful friend and has been a big part of Trevor and Friends Embroidery Club and, per, and almost all of the really cool in the hoop projects. Maybe not all of them, but like a very cool one every single month. Kim donated and, and brought that to the club and, and their, her zipper bags are like so easy to do. And we talk about it, you know, there's a video, you know, anyway, I'm not here to talk about Trevor and Friends anymore. There's lots of information on my website. You can always email me. What I'm here to do is digitize. And so I was just kind of giving, catching you guys up on how you can get these Winnie the Pooh designs. So yeah, it'll cost you 99 bucks, but you're going to get way more than the Winnie the Pooh. You might be surprised. Um, I, I brought this out, um, workshop number one. Like we started that in 2015, but I did a retreat for my workshop number one members last month. And so if you happen to join workshop number one and you haven't like caught up with me lately, I have a brand new website and you just need to go ahead and join with a free account. Um, you know, sign up for my Sunset Stitcher account or sign up for the Power Start classes. They're free. Then um, I can uh, add, you know, then email me and I'll put it in. You just tell me what you've got. I, Trevor, I bought workshop one. I love the classes. They were great. Well, guess what? There's new classes for you to download and maybe you've lost all the ones back from then. Well, you can download them all. So if you've joined any of my past classes, my work, my Floriani workshops or my embroidery clubs and you're not on my website yet please just join with a free account and then let me know and i can get you on so that you can access the good stuff and if you join for season two that's how you get the these two designs and more because we're going to do um the one what is it mr saunders you sitting by the log anyway i'm going to work on one right away here so let's get started on that you guys um so the, there's one class left that's live and we're in the workshop one retreat because it was five five classes we did and so there's a challenge going on if you're a member of workshop one there's a challenge yeah so if you're not sure you, you've got a week to figure it out because the challenge class is next week it's april 23rd will be our next live class members of workshop one you're all in okay all that said let's do some digitizing trevor and so thank you very much um go ahead nick and bring my screen kind of bigger full screen um um, I can also, um, this is the uh, website, our website, you know, Sunset Stitches. And um, this is where it says DigiTalk. You know, that's the new program. You know, that's where you can, if you want to know when the next one is here, you know, there's April 17th, but the next one, I'll post it later today will be April 24th. And, you know, we'll have a link so that you can remind about it. And if you click on this, then you can see the whatever we did in Digitalk, what number one. And um, this is the download page. And that's the part that you'll have to be a member to get to. It'll tell you to either log in or join. If you click on join, you can join for all of these different things. Um, what I'm saying is Trevor and Friends Embroidery Club Season 2 or my FTCU workshop number four, and you can reduce the price by just selecting it. And then where it says, click here to enter a discount code, put in, and let me type it in. Trev, oh, no, that's not an O. Sorry, I got Zebra, O-R-99. That was the one, and then you click apply. Yeah, and see that updated the price. And now you could go in. So if you're already a member and you just want to add that. Anyway, that's all I'm going to say about that if you need to know more. But Digitalk is, the, is today's one. I also added this new one, Dates and Times. And Dates and Times, it's like, this is everything. So uh, Workshop 4, the next three classes. Um, Digitalk, the next two classes. Uh, free Font Friday. Every Friday we go live, Nicholas and I, and talk about our latest free fonts. Here, bring me big again, Nick. I got. I'll, I'll show them the fonts. Like this is. A, you could get this right now on our on our website, right? Just download. Go ahead and download Digitalk. You know, by and but this is last week's. And so, just guess what? If you're a member, you also get access. 
If you bought either one Trevor and Friends and Embroidery Club Season 2 or FTCU Workshop 4, then you can get access to all of these fonts as well because we do a new font every week and we're on font number 13 and counting. So um, every week we do a new font. That's Free Font Friday. Okay, all that said, bring me back on screen, Nick. Let's get um, over and on to the software here. And so um, bring me to here. I like this one, Nick, where I'm like, uh, we're fighting over it. There, like that. And it's like the software is big, but I'm still part of it. And I can talk to them. But, and so you guys go ahead and chit chat. I haven't really looked too much. Nick's been putting them over there, but mm -hmm. Suzanne says she's sending hers over today for the challenge next week. Thank you, Suzanne. That is awesome. And so, um, Tell me what I'm gonna go do some work, Nick. But if you want to tell me what anybody's saying, that's fine. Mm. But I needed to have a sip of my juice first. So I got the two designs that I finished already up here in case we want to talk about them. Um, if I hide the stitches, so if I if you don't, that's the picture, right? And the picture, I, I'm sure that you know that I didn't draw this. <laughs> right? Like everybody knows that it was like Alfred Milne or something at Drew. Um, actually, um, I looked up, I thought it would be very important to talk about this because typically you can't just digitize Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh is absolutely protected by copyright and I would never you know, dream to offend Walt Disney. We love Disney. Nick and I, you know, it's one of our favorite places to go in the whole world, you guys. So that said, you know, as you probably heard or maybe saw that crazy horror movie or whatever, there's a little bit of, uh, you know, expiry of some of the copyrights. And so um, I went to the Wiki Commons, which is like a website that you can use to learn about things of this such. And I looked up the book, Winnie the Pooh, 1926, found the illustrations. Um, they're all here. And then, of course, you can click on one of them, right, to get more information about it. Um, that'll give you a bigger picture. You could right click and say save image. You know, it's basically how I, you know, do it. And then, you know, where do you want to save it to? So I guess this is like right onto my desktop here. I'll just save the image, but I already have it on my screen and I've done it. I just, that's how I got it, you know? So, so and then <clears throat> um, you can learn more about the copyright, uh, you know, and, of the, the artist and author and all that stuff and how it's changed, I guess, a little bit. So I, I was just going to say, I think, I don't know if you said, but I think it's somewhere around 70 years until something enters public domain. And there's a whole bunch of um, children's stories and movies that are coming into public domain. And I don't know if anybody that's here today has seen, but there's a bunch of horror movies. Like there's a Bambi horror movie. Yeah, I don't know. A Bambi the horror, the Pooh horror movie. Not Bambi. <laughs> um, so the Winnie the Pooh one, I think we all have heard yeah. about. Wow. Those are something else, I guess. Yeah, no, I did learn a little bit about it. And when I was on here, and I'm trying to think of where it was, um, because if I clicked on it, I don't want the image. I want the, um, oh, I was looking at this last night. And it showed, it talked about it, actually, because it depends on the country, Nicholas. And it, the yeah. laws are different per country. And yeah. so this particular, uh, il these particular illustrations, these Winnie the Pooh ones, um, it talked about here, it, it, this is what I was saying, is it kind of talks a little bit about in the United States versus the United Kingdom and what is and isn't, I guess, allowed. Um, yeah, so, you know, all that said, that's where I got the images from. And I tried to use my best guess. So, um, you know, I know that all our members are in Canada and the United States. And so hopefully we're not offending anybody else. But um, so the picture is there. And then, of course, I've used my tools to digitize them. And so that's what I want to get on to now. Nick, we're like 15 minutes in. And I really, I promise in the future, I'll be quicker about this. Get to it, right? Trevor, we want to digitize something. So um, the one that I picked out for today here, let's turn back on the stitches. See how I can turn on 3D mode. I can also hide the picture. So I can just see what I did and didn't do in case there's lines missing. Um 
I really wanted to respect the marks that were made by the original um, artist. And so I tried to follow the best I could. That said, um, I don't know if you could tell from the photographs. And so um, one of these designs I did using a sketchy kind of way. And then the other one I did using a click, click, click kind of way. And I mean, any software that I've ever owned could do this, right? So the sketchy one just makes it so much faster. And that's the, we call it sketch a stitch, right? At Floriani. And it's just a very easy way. So this is the one that I sketch a stitched. And the other one that I did, I did more of a click, click, click method. And mainly because of all the straight lines, you know, that was, I could have sketched this part and I maybe even did some, but the point is there was a lot of lines that looked very long and straight to me. And so it was easier just to go click and then click and then click at the bottom again. You know, does that make sense? And so the point is when I'm here and I'm digitizing and I think I should just go ahead and get into it is um, I have the choice, right? I could click, click, click. And to do that, I would use a tool that goes click, 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 and then right click. And I would make a line, right? It would be uh, stitches, you know, and I'll just turn on my red or something like that to make it a, I usually work in a, a color that gives me some contrast. The last thing I want to do is work in a dark gray line on my black. Cause I'll never know where I've gone and where I haven't right Nick. So yeah. Anyway, um, interesting that uh, you were telling you're telling us about a B Bambi movie. Is that out now, Nick? The Bambi movie is. Uh, I don't know if it's out, but they're for sure making it. Like that, there's a couple more where it's like things that just entered public domain, and they're, they're going to be making like spinoff horror movies of them. Oh no! Just a bunch of things that are kind of Disney. I'm just trying to look around a little bit and look, think about this design and how to do it, and. Um, what I think I'll do, um, Nick, um, I actually did something kind of fun. So you guys can tell me. I'll, I'm taking feedback on today's class, y'all. So, you know, good or bad, let's hear it. You know, if, if you're having fun, stick around. If not, kick the can. Um, I recorded doing the Eeyore one, like start to finish. I sat down and just pushed record and recorded doing it. It took 38 minutes. So... You know, um, if I don't get going, I won't get that one done today. But what I thought would be fun would be to watch that recording sped up. So I'm going to put it on. And so when I do that, I believe, um, does that kick my face out, Nick? And it's just like full screen the video. I don't remember, but we'll find out here. I think it's going to be. But my voice will still exist because I don't, there's no audio in this uh Thing, so I should be able to talk. And so um, I'm just going to put go ahead and push that right now. And so here I am getting started, right? And I've got it up on my screen and I got my sketch a stitch. And so you can kind of tell it sketch a stitch because I see that little blue uh, wheel in the corner. That's the widget, you know, where I got all these different brushes that I can use. And you'll, I haven't let go there. See, when I let go, did you see it get darker? So I'm just basically sort of scrubbing along the line and then whenever i feel like i need a rest i just let go and the stitches instantly appear and that's kind of the cool thing about sketch a stitch and i'm using my touch screen laptop to do this i could do it with my mouse and my hand it's just not as easy to do because well i guess nothing's hard it's it's about what feels natural, right? And and I'll tell you, when you put a picture on a touchscreen and you put a pen right on that glass and you trace over it, it starts to feel very natural. And then the key was to get the... Um, the real key, Nick, was to get the ergonomics. And you'll notice when I do it that I always get close to my screen because... And I kind of learned this from watching my wife draw and stuff, but... You know, Lorna's does large scale art and she'll use her whole arm to paint. Like she, I've seen her paint with a broom. You know, you try doing that. <laughs> ever, ever, ever paint with a broom. But um, 
What I'm saying is when I do this sketching, I like to sit close enough that I'm not using my arm to do it. I'm using my wrist. And that's a really key ingredient for anybody that's going to try and do this at home. Because honestly, if you don't own Floriani, I mean, we can't understand why you don't. But of course, you know, you can do dread sketching with whatever you own, right? And this is the technique is not unique to Floriani. The tools that we have are, and so your tools might look a little different and whatnot, but so I'm kind of queuing up to do Mr. Sanders here. I can see him in front of me and I'm sort of getting my bearings on where I'm going to start and all that. Um, it looks like this is like two minutes in. And so this is going to be kind of something different. Um, I thought I would, um, I grabbed my book, you know, <laughs> Winnie the Pooh. Nick, do you remember me reading this to you? You probably don't. I don't remember really particularly like reading it because... Uh, you read me mostly Dr. Seuss. Mostly Dr. Because it's a way easier to read, Nicholas. Um, anyway, I, since I'm do digitizing Eeyore, I grab chapter number six, in which Eeyore has a birthday and gets two presents. And so I'll read a few verses. I may not get all the way through it because I'm going to stop by the time we stop here in about six minutes or something like that. But Eeyore, the gray old donkey, stood by the side of the stream and looked at himself in the water. Pathetic, he said. That's what it is. Pathetic. He turned and walked slowly down the stream for 20 yards, splashed across it, walked slowly back on the other side. Then he looked at himself in the water again. As I thought, he said, no better from this side. But nobody minds. Oops, sorry, wrong with nobody cares. Pathetic. That's what it is. There was a crackling noise in the bracken behind him, and out came Pooh. Good morning, Eeyore, said Pooh. Good morning, Pooh Bear, said Eeyore. Oh, said Eeyore gloomily. <laughs> I was never very good at catching the voices, was I? If <clears throat> if it is a good mo if it is a good morning, he said, which I doubt, he said. Why? What's the matter? Nothing, Pooh Bear. Nothing. We can't all, and some of us don't. That's all there is to it. Can't what? said Pooh Bear, rubbing his nose. Gaiety, song and dance. Here we go round the mulberry bush. Oh, said Pooh. He thought for a long time and then asked, What mulberry bush is that? Bonhomie, went on Eeyore gloomily. French word meaning bonhomie, he explained. I'm not complaining about it. There it is. Pooh sat down on a large stone and tried to think this out. It sounded like a riddle, and he never was much good at riddles, being a bear of very little brain. So he sang, Coddleston pie instead. Coddleston pie. Coddleston pie. A fly can't bird, but a bird can't fly. Ask me a riddle and I reply. Coddleston, Coddleston, Coddleston pie. That was the very fir first verse. When he had finished, Ehor didn't actually say that he didn't like it. So Pooh very kindly sang, a, a, sang the second verse to him. Coddleston pie. Coddleston pie. A fish can't whistle, and neither can I. Ask me a riddle, and I reply, Coddleston, Coddleston, Coddleston pie. Eeyore said nothing at all, so Pooh hummed the third verse quietly to himself. Coddleston pie, Coddleston pie. Why does a chicken? I don't know why. Ask me a riddle, and I reply, Coddleston, Coddleston, Coddleston pie. That's right, said, oh, that's right, said Eeyore. Sing, um, diddy, um, diddy. Here we go gathering nuts in May. Enjoy yourself. I am, said Pooh. Some can, said Eeyore. Why, what's the matter? Is anything the matter? You seem so sad, Eeyore. Sad? Why should I be sad? It's my birthday, the happiest day of the year. Your birthday, said Pooh, in great surprise. Of course it is. Can't you see? Look at all the presents I have had. He waved a foot from side to side. Look at the birthday cake. Oh, look at the birthday cake. Candles and pink sugar. Pooh looked first to the right and then to the left. Present, said Pooh. Birthday cake, said Pooh. Where? Can't you see them? No, said Pooh. Neither can I, said Eeyore. Joke, he explained. Ha ha. 
Pooh scratched his head, being a little puzzled by all this. But is it really your birthday, he asked. It is. Oh, well, many happy returns of the day, Eeyore. And many happy returns to you, Pooh Bear. But it isn't my birthday. No, it's mine. But you said many happy returns. Well, why not? You didn't always want to be miserable on my birthday, do you? Oh, I see, said Pooh. It's bad enough, said Eeyore, almost breaking down. Being miserable myself, what with no presents and no cake and no candles and no proper notice taken of me at all. But if everybody else is going to be miserable too. This was too much for Pooh. Stay there, he called to Eeyore as he turned and hurried back home as quick as he could, for he felt he must get poor Eeyore a present of some sort at once, and he could always think of a proper one afterwards. Outside his house, he found Piglet jumping up and down, trying to reach the door knocker. Hello, Piglet, he said. Hello, Pooh, said Piglet. What are you trying to do? I was trying to reach the knocker, said Piglet. I just came round. Let me do it for you, said Pooh kindly. So he reached up and knocked at the door. I've just seen Eeyore, he began, and poor Eeyore is in a very sad condition because it's his birthday, and nobody has taken any notice of it. He's very gloomy. You know what Eeyore is? There he was, and what a long time whoever lives here is answering his door. He knocked again. I'm terrible at reading this part. But Pooh, said Piglet, it's your own house. Oh, said Pooh, so it is. Well, then let's go in. How's my time now? Got about a minute left. What's going um, So they went in. The first thing Pooh did was go to the cupboard to see if he had a quite a small jar of honey left. And he had. So he took it down. I'm giving this to Eeyore, he explained, as a present. What are you going to give? I couldn't I give it too, said Piglet, from both of us? No, said Pooh, that wouldn't be a good plan. All right, then, I'll give him a balloon. I've got one left from my party. I'll go get it now, shall I? That, Piglet, is a very good idea. It's just what Eeyore wants to cheer him up. Nobody can be uncheered with a balloon. So off Piglet trotted in the other direction, went Pooh with his jar of honey. Well, I know this picture, the design is almost done. I'm doing the little cute little hedgehog in the design. Um, that story is so fun to read, and I'm horrible at it, by the way. But it goes on, um, you know, to obviously you probably remember it, reading it yourself. If you didn't, you might want to pick up the book, right? The Winnie the Pooh, released in 1926, um, and started a whole sort of series of books and wonderful stories. Anyway, I'm not very good at reading, so I'm going to stop. Um, but that was fun. <laughs> Did you guys enjoy watching me do it? Scrubble while I tried to read that story. Um, Pooh goes on to uh, run into Owl. And Owl writes on Pooh's... Oh, Pooh eats the honey, by the way. Completely forgets track of what he's doing. Eats the honey. Gets to Owl's house. Owl, he wipes out the jar. And Owl writes all over it in like, you know, uh, it's almost illegible. But it kind of says, happy birthday. And as you probably all know, they all end up back with Eeyore for a very happy ending. Um, okay, so <laughs> what do you got, Nick? <laughs> uh, Sorry. My ad says, I don't have a touch screen unless I use an iPad. Do I have to buy the app for the iPad? <laughs> um, if you don't have a touch screen, you can do it with your mouse. You know, I'm just going to say that you don't have to get it. It's one of those situations where if you got it, you'll use it. But if you don't got it, you don't have to go and buy anything. I don't recommend you buy stuff for it unless you really love it. And then maybe you want to invest in that. What should you invest in? Well, that depends because a touchscreen, I, 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 the iPad, as much as I could do this all on my iPad, I certainly enjoy. The iPad is an app that just does the sketch stitch But when I put it on my desktop computer, it's kind of like the sketch stitch plus the Floriani combined. So it makes it much, much more powerful. And it gives me the ability to choose between the different tools, which was what I was about to do. And so I better get started. I got half an hour left in my class. I want to do these. But yeah, just hold on, Nick. I'm going to finish that. <clears throat> I haven't finished answering it. Yes, you could invest in something. And so a touchscreen laptop would be my preference. But 
um, you can also get a touchscreen display. So if you really love your computer and you don't want to be getting a new computer, but you wish you had a touchscreen laptop and a computer combined, you buy a dis pen display. And those start mm, 250 and up, maybe even 100, 299 or 199 and up. Uh, for a touchscreen display, like a 19-inch display, plugs into any computer then, and you can do that. Um, that said, uh, and that even works with my Mac, so now I can literally have a touchscreen Mac. Um, anyway, I'm not going to talk about Macs today. You got another question, Nick? I'm going to digitize while you ask it to me, okay? Um, it's equivalent. Karen was just asking, when you're doing sketches, do you need to worry about where um, exactly where you stop for a break and starting there again, I think? Well, you do, but you do and you don't, because if I, uh, I I'm just going to take that run stitch and if I start on the left and I let go on the right. And so you can see a little black dot where that, you know, would you make my screen big now, Nick, and take my face to small. So when you see the little, there's, you know, an even bigger Nick to, so like pro the profile that puts my face right over it. Yeah, that's a lot. And then like when I, you can see the black dot. That's where I stopped here. Let's draw another bit and stop right there. See, so if I just pay attention to wherever that black dot is, I can make sure that the stitching doesn't have any jumps. I don't, you can draw, if you want to draw that far and let go and that far and let go and that far and let go, it's not wrong, but don't draw it like a natural artist that would draw left to right, let go, come back left to right, let go come back left to right let go because if you don't connect your lines and you just let them go like this they'll be and i'll just turn off 3d and i'll even hide the image there'll be jumps in between right can you almost see it it's like it sews the line ties off jump jump jumps to the next line ties on you know a little little knot at the beginning so you can avoid all that by just drawing your next line you know from that point you can join them if you want later, but you don't need to, as long as they're within, um, you know, and there's a distance that, you know, that's within the settings that you can choose kind of like how close does it have to be so that it won't create a thread trim, you know, and a jump kind of thing. So I can very easily draw stitches. I'll just turn on the 3D, um, but I'm not drawing Winnie the Pooh here, you guys. I need, so let me select all items and just trash all that mess that I just made. And, oh, that didn't work out very good here. Use the um, the other thing I've got the touch screen, but I can pick my pen up and use that or my mouse up and use my mouse just as easily. So um, if if my pen is awkward to me for some tasks, I like having both is what I'm saying. So I'm kind of sitting at, I don't know if you guys can see me, but my, my other laptop, I'm actually going to hold it up for them, Nick. Make me big for a sec. That's the one I choose when I it I could flip it around and it's like a laptop, but right now it's uh, like uh, sits on my desk, nice and flat, and then um you know a little pen to draw on it with. So that's okay. So bring it the other way around, and then uh, I hid the picture, so I need to put the picture back on. And I just want to point out that I can zoom in. You know, if I zoom out, I can see it. If I want to know, I, I always set the size. You know, if you're going to sketch anything, you better pick a size. So I will use my backdrop tool and it tells me the size of it. And I can, you know, set it any size. Um, currently, it's about 10 inches by nine. Um, but of course, you can resize them later, you know. And I'm going to sketch and run stitch. So it makes it quite wide range of sizes possible because it's going to be very light embroidery. Um, but what I don't do is sketch at 50% because like, it might be easy to do it, right? You'd be like, oh, wow, I could just get at her here and be like squiggling some lines and then some more lines. And I mean, if you don't mind being really rough, if you're like, you know what? Close is good enough for me. I just need a quick answer to this. You know, I can do that pretty quick. But if you zoom in, like I am not even coming close to the actual artwork <laughs> that's on the screen, right? It's I've just drawn lines that kind of went where they went. So I like to try and respect the 
especially for this artist. And, you know, and, and I think for this, everybody would appreciate closer than that, Trevor, you know, come on, <laughs> take your time. We're not in a rush here. We want a really nice design. You know, that's the point. So I will take a little more time, but um, I don't have to take a lot. So it depends on whether I'm going to click, like I said earlier, I can use this tool and I can click the lines. And so then, you know, if you want to do a line, you'll go click and you'll go click and you can, um, you know, decide to come off the line and do like a little click, click, click. And I will just walk right back down a line. So most lines that I do, I try to do twice or three times or four times. And I don't make it a rule. In fact, it's one of the things I think that makes them interesting is some lines I purposely only go around once. And some lines I'll go around like, three times, you know, and, and make them heavier. And that's kind of up to you because you can kind of see where some lines look a little heavier in the thing. Anyway, see how, if I click, 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 look how I can be really, you know, quite exacting with it. Um, so that's up to you, right? You can do that or you can pick up this little sketchbook thing and have all these little brushes and if you want to do satin lines i mean that's fine but they're going to be thicker lines right if you want to do the sort of most thin stuff then you probably are going to stick to run stitch right so that's what i do and i can see right where i left off no i'm not even going to use my pen here the pen's up here i'm not even i'm just doing it with my mouse right now so whoops that wasn't very good i can do better than that i can totally follow these lines and if you're like men he's not very you know accurate well, when you get zoomed in 145%, and quite often that's still not enough for me, I, my favorite number is 300. So when you watch my design stitch out, you'll notice that I tend to do everything that's like in the area of my design. And look how I, I didn't even, I'm still not really done very well. If I start at 300, so let's just select everything that's there. And I'll just push delete on my keyboard to get rid of all that. And I'll start again. And this time I'll start right at 300 and I can just trace along this line and back and up and down. And um, I can follow these lines. And like I said, I try not to fuss over it. If one line gets done three or four times, uh, so be it, right? And then I can stop and look how much more accurate I can be and how quick I can go. So now I'm just going to let her fly while we chit chat. But um, is it anybody's birthday today? Because, um, you know, what are you guys talking about? Nick, tell uh, me what I there's a, I got a question. From Suzanne. A question. Asking, okay. Um, are the updates for Sketches Stitch free, like the Floriani or are they? That's a good question, isn't it? You know, the truth is, Suzanne, um, Floriani does not charge when we do the update. So, and when I say we, I mean RNK distributing, because um, of course I work for RNK, and that's my you know real job in the world is that I um, work on our RNK software and video training and um, development and all that, and so we're always excited about getting a new update. And um, so the answer is the update is always free, but. Um, the the new features are typically for FTCU. So what I mean to say there is if you bought Sketch a Stitch and it was two years ago or four years ago, we haven't really added anything to Sketch a Stitch. It's the same, but your workspace would have changed because of course we did add other things to the design, like just as an example, and I'm going to stop right now and click select. And notice when I click select that there's a box around it. Here, let me hide the picture and see the box that's around my selection and see how it's got like a copy symbol around it. So if I select that and I click on the copy symbol, I've got two of them and there's a delete button right there. I can click on to delete the one and all that. Well, in older versions of the Floriani software, those, you know, the measurement that says 1.6 inches by 0.59 inches, that wasn't there. So Sketch a Stitch didn't have that. So when we added that as a, so global things that affect every Floriani software would affect Sketch a Stitch. So in some ways, yes, Sketch a Stitch did get better over time. But in a lot of ways, it's really FTCU. When, when we say free updates for life, really what that does 
that what that means is um we'll keep that software updated for life you know it'll always have the latest version of pes format or whatever you know that kind of thing um it'll always work with the latest version of windows how's that um but um you know, we maybe aren't going to do a bunch of new development for the sketch stitch. It's kind of got everything it needs. If something came up where it needed something, then we would probably is that, you know, but it's, it, so does that kind of answer it? It does. We do free updates, but it's really when we say that we mean FTCU. So when I'm doing this and I'm using sketch stitch, I'm kind of giving myself the freedom to, not do exactly what I see. I, you know, I don't want to have to jump. So if there's a little mark that's like that, I'll either leave it out or I'll come back and I'll just decide that I can get that mark as part of this. Um, rather than, you know, when will I make a jump? You know, that might be a better, you know, kind of, kind of thing is I won't attach everything, you know. And so if you look at the design I did um, for today, I jumped in for the eye. I didn't want to connect it to the hair. I was like, no, I want that eye to be very much what I see, you know, and I, I it's hard. It's hard because you got to interpret, right, what you see. Well, look how pixelated it is when you get zoomed in. It may be free artwork, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's high resolution, right? So you got when you get that close. And so remember, my favorite zoom mark is 300, but I will zoom in up to 600. You know, that's my range where I work. So if I was going to, you know, sketch this again, I would take my sketch tool. I can just take like whatever, a, a light blue color or something. And then um, I'll pick up my, uh, my uh, curse little pen again. And, you know, it's like, well, what, what do you think? I, there's only so much room here for stitching. Oh, and it's, uh, I hid the stitches. So see what even no matter what I draw, the software is going to um, try to put that sort of reasonable stitch length along the line that I draw. So when you get into the smallest stuff, sometimes I'll actually give up the click and drag and go back to the click and click. Right. Because now I can be more. And with the click and click, when I take my pencil, I can do full on manual, which means it will only put the clicks that I put in, no other ones. So now I can be like, OK, I'm going to put one there. And when I pull, it tells me how far it is. So I can kind of see how long that stitch is. There's a two millimeter. There's like a one point seven. You know, that's a one point four. Um, I could come like back again. Um you know, do like this kind of a thing and then maybe that and fill it in however you want to, you know, and make that little sort of manual stitching to it. So sometimes I will, I'll go in and I'll be manual about it. Um, but usually uh, for the longer lines, I like to use the sketch. So really this design here, it's quite, there's not a lot of long straight lines like this one had, right? Where, you know, this one was like, ah, all those railings and stuff. But here it's pretty ergonomic. I could, if I just got going, and so I don't know how much time there's left, 15 minutes. I'm just going to sketch away for the next 15. Uh, and is it really? Yeah. Oh, happy I, birthday, sorry, Janita. That's Janita, that sounds right. I know that Janita is a member and she's participated in lots of classes and challenges. And it's so great to see you today. But happy birthday. Did you say 70, Nicholas? Oh, yeah, on Friday. Wow, that's a milestone. Uh, congratulations. Let's sing to Janita. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Everybody's singing at home, right? I'm not the only one. Saying, Happy birthday, dear Janita. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Good job, Nick. He's got the confetti. At this point, I think I'm like, wow, this is hard to script. Even at 300%, I can barely tell what it is. So I'm just kind of like drawing the main lines and then sort of squiggling some of the other ones. Sometimes I'll stop and you'll see me like zoom out. So I'll purposely grab my mouse and kind of like, oh, I don't want to miss look. You know, while I was over there, I I, I wasn't paying attention because I'm talking to you guys. I, I was like, now I'm just going to be like, forget it. 
we're leaving those out. But what about these ones in here? What are you going to do? Come back to get them? That's not hard, right? Watch me do it. So if you're like, oh, I missed a piece. Well, you know what? Just follow the yellow brick road right back to where you started from. So take your pen, you know, and, and just follow back along the, basically right along the same lines that you took to get to wherever you were. And then um, you can add in those ones that you're like, oh, I wish... I would have not forgotten those ones. And so I quite often, when I'm doing a design like this, it's quite, uh, what is the word we use? Artistic license, right? The main one that I try to interpret is how much thread is there room for, you know, at the size. And that's where size does matter because although everything's totally resizable in Floriani, I want you to notice that when I do this all as a big long run stitch, there's no fill here. This is all what you would call detail work. And if you select it and then here, let's just do like a copy of it. So it's 11 inches tall by it's eight by 11. Like it's, it, this is one of the full size drawings. Cause you'll notice on the wiki common, some of them are not as they're like barely really tiny little Winnie the Poohs that were on the decorating the page. And so they're not really a very high resolution picture. Like this one's got quite a good detail to it. Point is if you tie and select all that, how small can you make it? Well, you know, you could make it quite small. I mean, the software won't stop you from making it into a two inch embroidery design, right? That's not out of the question, but at two inches, I'm worried because it doesn't take out the lines, right? It's not like density, whereas you made it bigger or smaller, it, it somehow recalculated the lines in the stairs. Those are lines that I drew and it's going to follow them regardless of the size. And so it does get a limit. How's that? And, and, and really the limit becomes how far apart are the rows. To, if they get too close together, it just becomes solid. And maybe that's not wrong if it got a little solid. So really, because these are run stitch, I bet you could do it as small as two inches and not have it be excessively heavy. That said, just know that it will be a lot more solid looking than it was and a lot less detail than it was at the big size, right? Because the software can only put so many points along those lines that I drew, you know? And if you make it bigger, then it's the opposite, right? Now it actually has the ability to be more accurate to the lines that I drew. Yeah, so, okay, see my instinct, and I knew I would say this at the end of today, is to teach. And I really just wanted to digitize today and chat with y'all. And so, you know, that's kind of the game plan is like to do this. and. So I will, I know that I won't probably finish this design today, but I will do it. I will finish it and um, you'll, I'll, it'll be part of next week's, you know, I'll stitch it out. And then when we do Digitalk number two, uh, and I'm too Zoom, I can tell right away, I want to be closer so that I can be as accurate as I can without taking forever and doing click, click, click. So that said, um, I bet if I just stop talking, and did the design that this whole design would probably take about a half hour to maybe 40 minutes. Um, I do these a lot of times just on travel days because they're kind of fun, mindless things. You can stop and start if you need to, you know, work on them. I quite often have several of these on the go <laughs> that are in works. Um, I have one on the go right now for Cleveland, skyline i'm working on one um i'm gonna make a new postcard for my trip to cleveland nick i'm going to cleveland uh may and some see some lines look heavier like this a bear outline that looks to me like i'm gonna do that line like four times i am going the end of may nick uh away i know that nick will be here to man the fort and make sure that you know shovel the snow or all that um we really shouldn't have snow by then, should we, Nick? No, I really hope not. No, me too. Um, we literally had snow this morning. You guys, it's like winter never left. Uh, it was actually quite pretty uh, with all the snow and the trees like that. But um, Suzanne was wondering what the name of the site you were on in the beginning was. Wiki Commons. Okay. It's Google search, you know. Uh, but Wiki Commons 
is a website that's kind of dedicated to um, only sharing images that are uh, made into what is known as, I guess, public domain, you know, totally free to use. And so if you're looking for drawings or illustrations, like, you know, I love to sketch a stitch, but it's so much easier when you actually have, um, you know, a drawing to follow, you know, look at me go kind of thing. Right. And I'm just, so here I make, there's a bunch of little dots and I'm trying to decide how to process that. If I care, um, maybe I'll just be like, um, I think I'll come back down here and do a little thing like this and then come and a little thing like that. And then just go back into here. And, um, so really the point here is when you're doing these things, um, it's okay to be, you know, not perfectly when you're zoomed in 300%, you're like, man, those lines don't come anywhere near each other. But when you look at them at like one to one, they're totally solid. You know, that's the benefit here is that, you know, and if you, if you draw them and then you're like, I wish that one part didn't wiggle like that. Well, you can select it and then you can take your, you know, tools, your shape tool and move it. So I'm, I can still do that. I can do all that. So yeah, anyway, um, uh, I'm really excited about our uh, challenge uh, for Workshop 4. I know that Workshop 1 is next week, and it's like an open challenge. Um, workshop number 1, the, the theme of Workshop 1 was mastering the basics. And we really focused on, you know, what is push and pull, Trevor? You know, and why do I need to know about it? You know, that's what we, and, and if you don't fully get it, then you watch the class again because you can't really fully be an embroidery designer and not get push and pull and and you need to get density and you know overlapping and layering and pathing and there's just a bunch of things that we covered in those classes it was like four classes and it was recommended, if you were brand new, it was recommended that you at very least do the power start classes because those are ones that I go kind of like, this is the select tool and this is how to use it. And this is the, you know, my power start classes are free. If you don't know me and you're watching me today and you find this interesting, just visit Sunset Stitches and you can join our power start classes for free. That's great for anybody that owns the Floriani software of any level. Um, we go through kind of basic things like how to open a design, save a design, different formats, why the WAF format is the one that everybody talks about and why that's the one that we always save our designs in. And, um, you know, th the basics, right? And then we got into the, the, what I was talking about, push and pull, overlapping, layering, uh, just stuff like that. and. Um, yeah. Um, anyway, the workshop four, you know, we're kind of moved along down the road. And I always say if somebody shows up brand new in workshop four and it's their very first class and they jump in live at workshop four, class 17, it's not wrong, but just don't expect to get everything right. You know, we've taken our time to build up our knowledge and I'm a, I'm a firm believer in learning those basics. Cause honestly, once you get them and once those light bulbs come on and remember in the class who was there and we were like did the light you know, tell me when the light bulb comes on was the question right because once you get it and and honestly this is how i feel then everything becomes easy you know once you fully grasp the basics and how to use it and until the light bulb comes on well bless your heart suzanne it's probably the biggest mystery push and pull you know what is it can you identify it you know what suzanne we will make that a like we'll do a uh a push and pull questionnaire you know i'll make images i'll be like can you identify where it will push where it will pull and you know and then you can say a b c or d and then at the end of it, check, because that's a great, I'm just thinking out loud, but like that would be a, you know, a way to to help reaffirm, do you know? I'll make a test, like a chart, 
that you could look at. And so in this labyrinth of like, oh my goodness, there's so many lines. I'm just going to do the ones and that seem important to me and not you know, really fuss over them. Um, so this is another time when I might just be like, what am I, where am I at here? You know, I, 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 I always do that once in a while. Like I did most of Pooh Bear, but like I could have done like the rest of his arm <laughs> or his neck, you know, those are things that I meant to do. So um, that's the benefit of just, you know, when you're talking, uh, I'm out of practice. That's all. Oh, like literally out of practice because when I was growing up, you know, and I guess the other thing about when I was growing up, that's a little different from this is we worked on a paper draft. And so um, it was easy to kind of zoom in and also keep your eye on the big picture all at the same time, if that makes sense, because um, zooming in really meant just leaning closer, you know, <laughs> and leaning back meant, you know, zooming out and, um, nowadays I, you know, I need to remember to not forget to zoom in to be accurate, right? I don't, don't work at two, work at three, work at four. And I need to remember to zoom out so that I don't forget where I have and haven't gone and kind of have a little plan of where I'm going. But if you watch, like if you watch this one, so out when you get it and you watch it, cause I know you're going to sew this one. Um, it's fascinating to watch, right? Because I start in the middle and look, you can, you can almost see where my screen was because I'm working within the top and bottom of my screen and then I nudge the screen over and I work some more and then I work all the way to the right and then I kind of work my way down to the bottom and I work my way along the bottom and then I got to the other side and then I work my way kind of back up the, you know, the, the middle and the bottom and the middle and the bottom and then the left in the middle and the left and the middle and the top and the top to the right and the last little bits. So what I'm saying is when you get zoomed in at 300%, that's what you're looking at. And so that's kind of when you watch me sketch, you can almost imagine what my screen, you know, based on what I'm sketching now. So if I just take my, my little tool and, you know, so get zoomed in at 300%. And do your lines. And I try, I call them marks because, you know, that's what the artists sometimes call them. They're marks. So I try to follow the artist's marks the best I can. But that said, it's a log. And if I'm pretty sure that as long as mine looks like a log, y'all are going to love it, right? And so I'm not going to fuss too hard. But look, this is where I'm like, oh, man, why did you forget those parts? Well, that's fine. I can still get them. It's not like, like, how long did it take to get back over there, right? Oh, I forgot a part because I was not, um, I was talking without, uh, you know, like sometimes I need to use more of my brain and slow my mouth down a little bit so that I can kind of think about the path. If this was like something like a logo, I each shape would be so basic. I, you know, there'd be less thought involved and so when there's a little bit of thought involved um you might stop you know and kind of just be like hmm what would make this look good or you know what how much can i include is another question i sometimes have to ask and so if we stop right now and look you know like i didn't even get started until the you know you know, I've really probably only done 15 good minutes of sketching here. And you can see that we are getting around the horn. And like I said, if I would just kind of, you know, not not be talking and, and be just digitizing, I would could go even faster, you know, and that's the truth of it. So um, before I move up, I'm kind of right here. So I'm realizing that I got like a piece here that I can catch and... Um, maybe this one that I missed here. And so because I don't like them to have jumps, you can totally see me connecting, you know, roadways that were really not technically open, you know, or that were normally the artist has a little bit of an advantage about being able to pick that pen up and put it down somewhere else. And so does the hand embroidery person, right? They also have a, an advantage of being able to do that. But, um, you know, me, I have, um, I have the advantage of sketching it once and then stitching in a over and over again. So that's something that the artist can't say, right? That once we, once we digitalize this, 
will be able to use this line, you know, kind of again and again. So, yeah. Anyway, um, I certainly had fun. It, I see that we're kind of hitting the top of the hour mark. And so I'm going to just check in and see what was going on in the chat box. And there's quite a few people here. You know, um, really, the, the, if you... um. If you like the designs, then hopefully you're already a member because then it won't cost you anything. If you're not a member, I don't know why it wouldn't be because we have so much fun at Sunset Stitches, and so you want to join for our Floriani classes, right? I can see Candy in there. She said, did you plan it like that? <laughs> plan what? I don't know. Probably. Um, we are doing a challenge for Workshop 4. It's the Spiral Graph Challenge, and so I just want to say um, that our next... Next week in Digitalk, I'm going to do a, um, where's my screen again here? Put me back on for a sec there, Nick. Yeah, next week we'll do Digitalk. That's not next week. Those are the pictures. Yeah, April 24th, I'm going to do a few spiral graph designs for you guys. And um, those are, are so easy that, um, like, I'll probably make a dozen of them, you know, during the class kind of thing. And also have lots of time for kind of chat next week and questions so i hope you'll come again you guys uh but it's going to be digitop class number two um if you live anywhere near cleveland you guys um check out pins and needles because i will be in cleveland at the end of may may 30th may 31st and june 1st i will be at pins and needles in um, Middleburg Heights, Ohio, you guys, I can't wait to get there. Um, if you are a Floriani software person, you might like a sneak peek at uh, the May uh, free monthly designs are ready to go. And so um, you, will, of course, not get those until the end of the month when you hit the RNK Software Club website. Um, but those are the designs that you get if you're a Floriani software owner and you're a member of the Floriani software club, you get five free designs a month. And we um, happen to have them stitched out here. And so I wanted to show them to you guys, but all that said, um, thank you for coming today. I appreciate everybody that visited. So thanks so much, David, and Suzanne and Donna for your comments and candy Jean. Um, I will look back later when I get a chance. And I, I if you're watching the replay, uh, what I'm telling you guys is um, the more people that are visiting, uh, the more rewarding it is for me and Nick, and um, the more designs we'll want to do uh, for our Digitalk classes. And so if there's something you want to see, I wish you'd do up. Okay, Trevor, I wish you'd do. Let me know. You know, we'll work it out one of these weeks. I've got a lot of weeks ahead of me. And so um, we're doing Digitalk every Wednesday. Until then, guys, I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening and have a wonderful day.